Hey, this is Megan and I am here with Sizzlin' Summer Sketch number eight. This is week number eight. And this is actually the first Sizzlin' Summer Sketch that I've done a video for, but this came in through my inbox and I was like, wow, this is pretty fantastic. You know me, I love the angles. It actually um, has a little bit of that vibe of the layout that we did today that was part of Scrapbook Live. I'm gonna just quickly show you that. I will link this in my, uh, in the description, you can see this is this one we did for Scrapbook Live today. So it's just got, I don't know, the strips and all that kind of stuff. If you take Scrapbook Live and you kind of go the other direction, you can kind of see, I don't know, fun. Anyway, so I saw this one come in. I said, definitely, let me go ahead and make a video on it. They do have some tips in here, but I thought maybe just walking you through it. Um, but to be fair, just as a little bit of a disclaimer as I get going, I haven't put this together before. This is me working through this, just like you work through it. They have some tips up here on drawing some lines with a pencil to help guide us. So looking at this, um, we are gonna be needing to use some two inch strips of paper. Initially I thought, oh, we could just use the front and back of a single sheet, but I'm not 100% sure that you'll be able to use one piece of 12 by 12 paper cut into strips to get all of the pieces you need. So I have selected two pieces of designer paper that I like how they work. Sometimes that can work a little bit better, especially if you're not sure that the front and the back are necessarily the right combination. So let me show you. I'm using the Passport to Adventure collection. I don't have any photos necessary to go with this, but I thought it's just a fun collection to work with. I'm going to be using the kind of that rustic graph paper look um, for my background. And I've selected two pieces here. Now I could just use the blue city map. The opposite side to that is the stripes, but that's kind of busy. I thought it was kind of just a little too much going on, especially if you put it in stripes. So I like the blue. And then I said, well, what about the words? This is, has all the words on it. And the opposite side to that is a light gray. Again, we're kind of high contrast here and I was just a little worried that was gonna to be too much going on. So I decided we would just do the blue and the words. They're a little bit more tonal. There is definitely contrast. You can definitely see the contrast here between them, but uh, it was two separate sheets of paper. So I will have a total, if I have to use both sheets, I will have a total of 12 strips to work with, but I am only going to start off cutting three two inch strips of each before I start um, cutting additional. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. You may not necessarily be able to do the whole layout using just one sheet of 12 by 12 paper if you plan to use front and back. By the end of the video, we'll have a better idea if that works. Um, so maybe wait, be, don't dive in right away. Okay, so we have our two sheets of paper here. I'm actually gonna set those to the side. We have to do a little bit of prep work first on our layout here. So the background, in the directions they do, they hint that they tell us, they tell us here that they want to draw an angled pencil lines on your base pages. So you line up the tops of the strips to the pencil lines, and then you cut off any overhang and use the, the what they don't say is you can then use the excess to do the other pieces, the parts that you cut off. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw my first pencil line. Now, again, I mentioned earlier, and I probably should have spent more time looking for it, is that um, 18 inch ruler would have been really great to have. So what I'm gonna do here is I think I'm actually gonna angle this. Looking at the sketch, I should have dragged this into Photoshop and said, I'm thinking this is about an inch down from the top here on this side, coming over here, maybe about four inches from the top. So if I come over here one and drag it down to eight, to eight inches, which is right here. So I'm just looking and kind of got to eyeball it a little bit. If you have two rulers, you can actually make this work by putting the two rulers close together. And I would angle this up and there's going to be my 11 inches over here to um, eight inches, right? There's my line. Now I can bring in my second sheet of paper and I'm going to line it up and I'm going to see how this cuts through here. And I can actually bring this down, extend this. I gotta make sure my papers are lined up though. Make sure, don't draw anything before you put your papers on your background or your cutting mats correctly, lined everything up. And I can see how this is gonna come in. It looks like it's gonna come in 
you know, do I want more here? And if I do, I can angle up a little bit instead of maybe coming in at eight inch, maybe I'm going to have closer to five inches. Maybe I'll come down to one and a half. I'm just kind of playing around with it. What do I want? How do I want this to work? I think I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm going to go one and a half over here, up here. I'm one and a half inches from the top and I'm going to bring it down to eight inches. So if you have a long ruler, you'll be able to make that work. I am dealing with two rulers. So what I've done is I've got my rulers butted next to each other here, eight inches on the underside of this ruler right here on the underside is eight inches. If I come over here to the top edge of this ruler is one and a half up here at the top. Now I'm gonna grab my pencil, double checking. You know, if you need to come in, look at your paper down here. And if you need to move your paper on your background, you could always use um, a little bit of adhesive and secure it in place. I'm gonna line this back up. One and a half inches there. Pivot a little bit to get to eight inches. I'm gonna draw my line. I'm at the top edge of this ruler, of the left-hand ruler. There's my pencil line. Now what I can do is now holding this ruler in place, I'm gonna remove that ruler continue my pencil line here coming down to eight inches. Now I can go ahead and slide this other piece of paper in, line it up. I want to make sure I'm lined up at the top and the bottom and I am butted in there. I'm going to bring this pencil back, line this erase, or the, excuse me, this ruler, line it back up and extend it. I'm going to push it down. See, I'm pushing it Use that other rulers or guides. If you have two rulers, you can also try to get just a long, anything that's a long straight edge. Again, I wish I had my 12 inch or my 18 inch ruler. That would have made this really easy. Go ahead and extend that line. Okay, I've got, I've got everything here the way I want it. Pull this pencil, that line away. Extend my line all the way through this piece of paper. Okay, so now I've got a pencil line all the way down. You can barely see it, but I promise you it's there. Now, what am I going to do up here on the other side? I need to come in here and draw another line, but I want it to be the same um, angle. So what I'm going to actually do is I am just going to come in here. And if you want, you can bring, you know, a T square. You want to just go ahead. I think I can just, I'm going to come in and I'm going to go. I think I can do seven and a half inches. I'm going to come in at seven and a half inches, I think. So I'm measuring seven and a half inches, seven and a half inches. I'm going to make several of those lines, several marks, seven and a half inches. I think I'm actually too much. I think I need to be more like eight. So we'll take that back where I told you seven and a half, let's go with eight. I don't want to be too aggressive coming this way. Remember I'm using the scraps that I cut off here and I've got a lot of space I'm trying to cover here with paper. I really do think you're going to have to use two sheets more. It's going to take more than six, of those pieces. Now find those lines that you drew and go ahead, line up your pencil or your ruler and measure. So there we go. I've got the line up here. I've got another line here. They should be parallel to each other. And now it's time to go ahead. I can separate them if I want. It's time to go ahead and start cutting those strips. And as I mentioned, I'm going to start with cutting three strips of each. They're two inches wide, so I'll cut three two inch strips. Okay. 
you can mix and match. They use two if you want to use more. If you want to use different color or different sizes, you can. The two inch strips are a nice size to start with, but don't feel that if you have, um, you want to go three inch strips, you want to go with um, some three, some two, whatnot, you have plenty of um, options. You've got your guidelines in place. I would just make sure that you have plenty of paper to work with, especially if you are wanting to keep just two um, colors, make sure you maybe have some spare. Now we're gonna start over here on our bigger piece. Keep this close by because as you're cutting things off, you'll be able to move some to the other side and start to get an idea. Now, the first piece you put in place is really going to set the tone for everything. So I'm going to go ahead. I do have, I have a directional paper here. This piece right here is kind of non-directional. So I can get away with if I need to rotating pieces around, but this one, I'm going to have to work pretty hard to keep all my, my letters going the correct direction. So wish me luck. I'm going to go ahead, put some adhesive on. You can always come back and put in more adhesive. So don't feel like if you didn't get quite enough on here, you can lift your pieces and put it back. So there we go, there's our first piece. Now, what I'm seeing here is I've got this piece. And this is one of my longest pieces on this page. I'll actually have the shortest amount coming off, but what I'll be able to do as we get going here, I wouldn't say I'm gonna stop and cut every single one of these off as I cut them, but you're gonna see how it can come over to do the next piece over here. Thus laying them in place. You can see as I'm coming down here, I'm gonna have more and more of the pieces that are overhanging. See, I have bigger and bigger sections coming. So that's, that's good. Now, you will want to have your pieces of paper close by because you're gonna see this next piece that I'm gonna put in place. It's gonna overlap the two pieces. It's easier to do that when the pieces are actually, you're just gonna go ahead and actually just adhere both pieces together and you'll cut them apart. So don't worry about that. So we are definitely going to need to have more of those strips of paper. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually, let's see, I'm gonna put this piece on, this next blue piece. And what I'm gonna do then, let me come up here to this side. As I said, I am just trying to figure this out. rotate everything. This could be really interesting. My workspace is a bit tight. And you can't, I'm working off. I'm sorry. I'm totally working off camera. Let me move this up here so you can see. I'm going to lift up this flap so I can see where my piece of paper is. And I'm going to cut And I'm just kind of following along that edge. I'm trying to get some of this excess off so I can use it to build my next pieces. This one comes in here. There we go. Now here's where I run into a little bit of a thing. If I wanted to keep a directional paper, 
you can see how I'm gonna have these other pieces that are kind of getting in the way. Those will come up here. They can work in here at the top as well. So I'm just trying to play around and figure out. So I need this long strip over here, this piece. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna grab, I think I'll actually just use my personal, my photo trimmer, just for a quick, turn this into a, um, to take off that triangle piece. I'm gonna go ahead and just chop it. And I think what I'll do, as you can see here, you see how at the top here I have that full sign, but here I don't. I'm actually going to bring this down and go ahead and cut off so that I have the full set of words. That will line up a little bit better. This is going to be a little nuanced stuff that's really going to just depend on what you're using for your paper. You may or may not have that consideration with your paper. Okay. So then this piece, I need a longer piece here. This is gonna come up over there. I still have a short piece that can go there. I'm gonna chop off this to make it a right angle or to give myself a flat surface again. I am still crossing two sections. There's a little bit of space down here. You can see a little bit of space there. So I'm crossing two pieces. I'm going to come in with my adhesive and just get some good adhesive. I'm going to have a tiny little piece right here that I just need to make sure stays nice and stuck down. Um, And this is where I'm starting to see that I will probably need another piece of paper. So we are definitely another strip. So we're definitely going to have to use probably what I cut three of each. We're going to need four of each. So you're going to have a hard time getting out of one sheet of paper. If you use front and back of the same one, you need a one sheet plus a little bit more. So, um, I just don't think I'm going to have enough pieces. This can come up over here. I'm really close. I'm actually pretty close to having enough. And you wanna look and see whether or not you're gonna to wanna to bring in, you know, carry up your line this direction. How did they do it in the sample? They did carry up. You can see they used the corkboard one that came up here. So they would come in, I would need to go more like this and carry the same column up and that's where you just kind of play around a little bit more i have to see how much i'm going to be able to do that it might be a little bit short on this piece okay i'm going to cut one more strip of each one so there's one more two inch piece and I'm gonna come in here to my next one and cut that two inch piece. So you can see, I did four two inch strips of each color. Now, that's nice about this is I do have four inch strips I could use maybe for mats or something. You know, I've got a nice, nice size pieces left over. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and put a piece down. piece is really non-directional. So before where I was chopping off the top because I needed to keep my pieces going the right way, I can actually just flip this one and have it go the other direction. This longer piece, I'm actually, I have, I have a big section over here. Let me cut, rotate this around. See, I can see the back side of things. Let's see here. You might want to use your 
regular trimmer for this. It'll be easier to use my regular trimmer once I have both of these pieces cut apart, but it's working, I'm getting it to work. Flipping these pieces over and seeing what do I have available to make, like I might be able to use this piece over here. So yeah, you're just squeezing it in as much as possible, making it work, getting those pieces on here. Yeah, I can't get that piece up in this corner. I'm gonna raise my camera up just a little bit so you guys have a little bit more space here to see. I just am a little short over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll use this piece over up here and I'll be able to come in with a full piece up there. Okay, so now what I want to do is just make sure I'm kind of coming in here and lining things up. I'm gonna grab my ruler. I'm gonna line my ruler up and that's gonna tell me where this piece needs to start. So this piece needs to start about right here. That is where that piece is gonna line up. I'm lining my ruler up along this line And that's going to tell me where to put this piece of paper. And then that, once I got that first piece set, getting the other pieces should not be a problem. Just working those pieces in. And double check. Yeah, I'm just not gonna be able to. I'm just a little short. I, I mean, I measured it eight inches. Maybe if I take it back, the distance here is eight inches between these two rows. Maybe if I push this up a little bit, I would have been okay, but it's just, I think a little bit easier to not stress yourself out over the amount of pieces you use. Four strips of each gets you plenty. I'll be able to come in right here. That's going to work out really well. I've got a little tiny bit down here in the corner. Let me just see. I don't think I'm going to have any pieces that are really going to work itself, lend itself to that. If you're working with non-directional paper, it might work really well that way. I do also need a small bit up here that piece it's definitely easy when you have that non-directional paper because you can just like move it into place it doesn't really matter i have that directional paper so it does matter a little bit more okay there's those pieces i am i can probably just work this even though this is technically going to be upside down in there i think it's going to be okay it's the tiniest little piece right there okay so I technically have everything kind of adhered into, into place. What I need to do now is do finish cutting everything and getting all the pieces kind of trimmed off and cleaned up. So I do have a cut right here. If you, if I want to, I think I can just flip it all over. I can flip it all over and here I can see the back side. So I can come in with my scissors and I can cut along that seam. You could also clean up all your other edges and put it into your trimmer to clean up, but that worked pretty good. I've got that tiny little piece down here and I've got the piece over here. So now I will go around, use your scissors, use your trimmer, however you wanna do it and clean up all of the overhang. And then you're going to think about what you want to use to be able to kind of cap off these angles in the uh, sketch. They use the scissors punch, which is really fun when you punch it in the platinum shimmer and then use grab um, some cardstock, uh, you know, just a color of cardstock and create some handles. That's been really fun. I've used done that before. 
But here you can see we have the overall background done. A really fun technique, but I do like the fact that I went kind of not quite as contrasty with my tones here, but I do have some interest with the paper. The little bit left over of my pieces that I cut, you can see, you know, your best bet is definitely going to be using uh, a total of four sets of two inch strips. So I had eight two inch strips that I ended up using. So you can have just a combination of eight of any patterns that you want to mix and match, use cardstock, use some tonals. You can do more than two colors. Um, you could you do four colors, you could do three colors, you can make things an inch wide. So you're gonna need about 16 inches worth of uh, pieces. That's a good place to start. Okay. Now it's thinking about what am I going to do along the edge here? So I am doing travel and I just haven't used the luggage punch very much. Um, I just haven't done some tra travel layouts in a while. So I'm going to use the luggage punch and I'm going to punch it in basalt. I think it's a good contrast here. It's um, basalt is if Navy and gray had had a baby. So it's going to work out really well. I think I'm a little concerned because it's, they're kind of see-through and I'm not sure how this is going to work because see here, if I angle, I feel like I need to be on top or I need to be all the way down or I need to come in and back my, uh, luggage pieces. So I'm not sure if I come in across the top edge. And the other thing here I want to note too, is if I come in across the here with the luggage, I can't easily do the top because what's going to happen is my luggage would be upside down. Okay. That's not that great. But if I come in here across with the luggage, maybe what I'll do, is I'll just do one row of luggage coming across the bottom angle. I'm going to need a couple of passes with it. You definitely need more than 12 inches. That's one thing about using the punches that is nice because you can make as many as you need. Whereas if you're using stickers or uh, laser cut borders, you might be limited. Maybe you may not have enough to do the angles when you're coming across the angles, because it's definitely wider than 12 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and punch a second one, clear my debris. And here I can get these close, nice and close together. So yeah, two is going to come across and I like that, but I need something up here and I'm not sure what though. Um, one of the ones I really like to use when we're doing things that are travel is the, the chevrons, the arrows, right? So I think what I might do is come in with a chevron arrows, border maker cartridge. Let me grab my BMC system here, my border maker system, and we're going to punch chevron arrows. And I'm going to just get myself a thin strip of arrows across the top. So I'm just giving that movement, which is really nice when you're doing travel, you're going places. So that'll be fun. So I'm going to punch Chevron arrows and let me just move this piece of paper out of the way. So, cause I'm going to have a bunch of debris. Now, one thing here with Chevron arrows is I think I've got a little too much um, here. It's a little too thick. So what I'm gonna do is grab my trimmer and I before I trim it, cut it from the paper, I'm actually going to just trim off the edge a little bit and narrow it up. I just don't want it to be so thick. So I think I'll come in and I'm gonna cut about an eighth, around an eighth of an inch off. And then I will cut that's about a quarter of an inch from the bottom edge of the chevron. So you can see here, I have just a little bit narrower bit of chevron. Let's take a peek what that looks like. Okay. So I like that. What I really do kind of like is I actually like the Chevron a lot and I'm really tempted to just carry it to maybe come back here with the luggage. I could actually come in with my luggage and maybe do 
a bit at the top here if I wanted to, maybe some at the bottom. I could come in and do luggage across there, might be an option. I really just like that chevron across there, top and bottom with that chevron. What do you guys think? I don't know, I'm not doing a live. I can't get the instant feedback from you guys. But I do like, okay, so maybe what I just need up here, and here's what you can also do, something to keep in mind. If you've got a lot going on and you're just not sure what to do, come in with a double rickrack, come in with something very simple, come in with just a strip of paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and just cut a quarter inch strip of paper and cap it. So we've capped it. We're gonna say very simple up there. You can see that. And then I can come down here with my luggage punch. Because I do like the luggage. I don't use it enough. I'd like to use it, but give myself that flexibility. So there we go. I think I like that. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think by putting the chevron arrows up here at the top, it was starting to compete with the luggage. So by keeping it just nice and simple at the top, I'm not gonna compete with the luggage. It's gonna come across here. Then you'll be able to come in with some mats, some other decor for this. Um, I don't have photos to go on here. One of the things I might recommend for you, depending on how your photos are going to be, is don't put this decorative border on yet. See how your photos are gonna fit on here. Um, you may find that there's other ways you wanna add in um, some of the luggage detail, and maybe you just want a simple stripe. Uh, across both edges. So if you start to get into a little bit more heavy decor of your punches and things like that, wait till you have your photos, maybe just save some of the paper. Um, and that way you'll be able to make those decisions when you kind of have your whole layout in mind. But all in all, that is the layout. I'm going to go off camera here, put on some mats, use dig through my uh, passport to adventure and just kind of get, you know, put a little more on here so you can see what it would look like completed. And that'll be, uh, you'll probably have seen it right at the beginning of the video. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a chance to put, this is summer, uh, sizzling summer sketch number eight for week number eight and look forward to seeing your layouts in the virtual cloth group. Thanks so much for watching.